So my name is Jonathan Paji, and I'm a professor here in the Department of Aerospace Engineering at Purdue. You can think of hypersonic in terms of Mach number. That's one way to look at it. So Mach number means the speed of flight divided by the speed of sound. And hypersonic means that you're flying at a speed that's much greater than the speed of sound. But that, that's just one way to look at it. Um, and people uh, offer a, you know, rule as a rule of thumb, hypersonic starts at Mach 5, but it's very arbitrary. But uh, I like to think about it in terms of thermal load on the airplane. So for me, hypersonic starts when the um, thermal load on the airplane is the overwhelming design consideration, the aerodynamic heating, uh, the friction and compression of the flow that heats up the gas around the airplane is what is the overwhelming concern uh, in design. And so uh, putting satellites into orbit is, requires you to achieve uh, a flight speed is something like Mach 20 to 25, so you have to go hypersonic to get to orbit. And there is a lot of opportunity technologically in that area. Uh, so a recent NASA study showed that you could double the payload fraction of a launch system if you um, made the first stage an air-breathing hypersonic airplane, meaning an, uh, an engine that takes air from the atmosphere and burns fuel and flies hypersonically. So you could put double your payload into orbit with an airplane as the first stage. What really makes it um, uh, important to the military is the issue of reaction time. So if you can fly very fast, you can deny uh, your adversary time to react. So as an attacker, you fly very, uh, you send a missile that flies very fast, and the enemy doesn't have time to react and defend. Uh, from a defense standpoint, if you can fly very fast, so you're in an airplane targeted by a missile, you can evade it. And the combination of um, very high speeds and maneuverability and unpredictability is what makes the hypersonic regime very um, um, appealing to the military. It's really expensive and difficult to, to recreate the, um, the environment of hypersonic flight on the ground. So it's, uh, there's extreme conditions, high temperatures and pressures, and um, very fast flow speeds. And so it's, uh, hypersonic tunnels are very expensive. So it's something that the government has, uh, and a few universities have hypersonic wind tunnels, Purdue among them, uh, for, for study of hypersonic flight.